Are you from Nottingham? Yeah, yeah. I know it's weird, right? Are you from Rehoboth, Massachusetts? Rehoboth. That yeah, that's the one. Postal code O two seven six nine something. You're from Montreal, Quebec. Yeah, yeah. You guys are from Alberta, Canada. Are you from Plevin, Bulgaria? <laughs> oh, you're from Manchester. Yeah. How the hell did you know that? Postal code M15 something. You're scaring me. So you're from Bucharest, Romania? Are you from Sandusky, Ohio? Sandusky, Ohio. Yeah. I'll be right back. Where are you from? I'm from Vancouver, Canada. No, I'm like a nerd, basically. Are you from Virginia, Arlington? How do you know that? Are you from Munster, Ireland? Are you from Tipperary? Are you close to Stoughton? Are you from Newfoundland? You're, you're like an hour outside of St. John's, right? Are you from Marshall, Missouri? That's weird, bro. Don't do that. Do you live close to Apple Valley? That's actually where I live. How do you, how do you know that? I can tell from your accent. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got a strong Apple Valley, California accent. I know you can't tell, but like the rest of the world knows. <laughs> Are you from like near, maybe, I don't know, like two hours outside of like Waltham Abbey? I use this program Wireshark and what Wireshark lets you do is it lets you look at the actual packets of uh, raw data that are coming in and out of your computer through the internet. So if I just open this for a second, you're going to see all these, you know, different protocols, TCP, HTTP, lo lots of information being sent in and out of my computer from the internet. What we're interested in specifically is something called the Skype protocol. So you'll see if I start this up. I'll start to get a whole bunch of packets. So a whole bunch of information is being sent from this person's computer to my computer. And I can actually look at the origin of that information. So that's what I'm using as the basic tool to get the IP address of these people. So in addition to Wireshark, which is sort of, has sort of a, this nice user interface, there's a command line partner to it called T-Shark. And T-Shark.exe. Capturing on Wi-Fi. And you can see this is doing exactly the same thing that this is doing, it's just doing it straight in the command line. So what we're going to use is we're going to use Python to open this T-Shark program and read the information out constantly. And then we're just going to parse the string to get the, the source IP address. And then we're going to do a, uh, a geolocate query to find out where that IP address is located in the world. With a reasonable de degree of accuracy. It's not perfect, but it's, uh, it's pretty good. So let's start a new Python project in Visual Studio. There's some modules that we're going to use. We're going to use one called uh, maxmindb. So there's two, there's maximum dbdb and maximum ddb geolocate. We need both. So let's install this module and install this module. These are gonna let us look up the location corresponding to the IP address that we've gotten from our T-shirt. We're gonna go from geolite2 import geolite2. Um, we're also gonna use import socket and we're gonna use subprocess to actually run t -shark. The command is just going to be the t -shark program, so dot exe. And now we're going to open a process that just runs that, and we can capture all the output. We're going to go forward line in, we're going to iterate the process dot standard out dot read line, 
then we're gonna go get the columns from there. I'm gonna go columns equals the string of the line. Then we're gonna just split that on spaces. And now let's just print those columns and we're just gonna see where we're at here. You can see in the line, what happens is that there's an arrow. So it's saying it's going from this IP address, which is mine, please don't DOS me, to this IP address. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna get the source. So we're gonna just do that by identifying this little arrow here. Let me close that and we're gonna go, if this arrow in the columns and Skype, which is the protocol we're interested in, is in the columns, the source IP, that's gonna be just to the left of that little arrow. Now the problem is, as you saw, this includes both incoming and outgoing packets. So I'm, I wanna filter out the, the outgoing packets. So I'm gonna include that up here. So we're gonna say, if source IP equals my IP, just continue and that'll, that'll reduce nesting. Actually right now, let's just print the source IP. We can just see if that's working. If I start a new chat, you can see, yeah, we're, we're getting IP addresses here. And now we're actually gonna do the geolocate. And so I'm just gonna define a function here called get IP location, and we're gonna pass a parameter called IP to it. We need something called reader, which I guess I could be called a global up here. So we're gonna say geolite to the reader. And we're gonna say this reader um, is gonna get the IP and it's gonna return a location. But the location is gonna be some big nested dictionary. So country equals location, country, names and then in English. All right, and we, after we do all that, let's return country, subdivision, and city. And then we're gonna go print get IP location and then source IP. Let's try that and see if that works. New chat. This person's from Orlando. Let me, let me fix up the formatting and also look into why the subdivision isn't getting correctly located. So location equals, oh, I don't know why I put country in here. That's not at all right. And this didn't look as good as I wanted it to. So Let's see how that looks. So this person is from Norway. Um, this person is from Daytona Beach, Florida. This person's from Alaska. What was Wasilla? Wasilla? Alaska? Oh, maybe not. Uh, I'm doing a YouTube video on how to geolocate people using Python. It's a, it's a little bit creepy. It's mostly just nerdy. How to creep people out on the yeah, basically, yeah, that, that, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I don't, I don't argue with that. That's exactly what I'm using. I'm actually using T Shark so that I can capture the sub process using Python. I'll give you the code. There you go. It's all yours.